What's up guys, it's Smasher. Today I'm bringing you a review of Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Future Soldier. I've been looking forward to this iteration in the Ghost series for quite some time. The last Ghost uh, in the Ghost series was released about five years ago, in 2007 when Gra 2 was released. I spent a considerable amount of time playing both Gra 1 and Gra 2, and I truly, truly like the uh, Tom Clancy series. So, just that as a baseline, let's jump on in here. Single player. Uh, the graphics are about on par for a modern shooter. Some of the backgrounds are a bit shoddy, but uh, overall they're pretty pretty much as good as it gets on the antiquated Xbox hardware. And I am playing on uh, the Xbox, I know, uh, so that just should give you a baseline for where I'm at there. The sound in this game is, is rather immersive. It incorporates some futuristic sounds that I thought was done pretty seamlessly. Uh, it tends to enhance the environment and uh, the gameplay overall. The story of this game is disappointing to say the least it's pretty much uninspired rehashed the voice acting is terrible the characters are cliche and typical for a modern shooter it was I was really hoping that Ghost Recon would break away from the pack I guess the allure of the modern shooter fan base was really too much for them to resist um, chasing nuke toting terrorists while dealing with Russians bent on ending the world is a used and abused storyline in my opinion um, and, and again, they're just following along with the modern shooter uh, way of dealing with things, and I'm just, I'm, I'm not on for it. I was hoping they'd break away, but they didn't. So, um, besides the shortcomings of the story plot, it plays out seamlessly and has excellent pacing. The pacing in this game is just fantastic. There's a great balance between firefights and stealth missions, and so you get the best of both worlds, in my opinion. It does incorporate strategy and planning that has been one of the hallmarks of the Ghost series in the past. You need to come up with a plan and then execute it. You can't just go in blindly. You've got to recon a situation, try and solve the puzzle of which enemies to take out first, and then do so as a team. The user interface is absolutely polished and useful. It adds a unique dynamic to this game. I am I have been a big fan of this uh, user interface so far. It's definitely it's definitely a step up from what they've done in the past. The cover system in this is is just pretty much a clone of Gears of War. It's it's very reminiscent of, of Gears. It's polished and its movement is seamless. So, you know, honestly, if they were going to pick a cover system to emulate for this game, they sure as heck picked a good one because they are they did it very well. The cover system is very seamless. So, that's pretty much all I have to say about uh, single player. Let's just jump on over to co-op. Co-op uh, pretty much makes up for what this game lacks in story. It makes up for it in co-op gameplay. The campaign shines bright when played through the eyes of co-op. This game kicks butt in co-op and I cannot emphasize that enough. The teamwork necessary adds a dynamic that is hard to find in most ghost games or find in most games. Solving the puzzles on how to do a mission as stealthy as possible or participating in huge firefights with friends makes the replay value of this title high in my opinion. These it, like I said it's, it's a lot of fun with friends and uh, you doing so and playing with friends is just going to he have huge replay value. Even to this day, I'll still throw in Gra 2, uh, and even Gra 1 with some buddies and go run around for a little bit. And I think this is going to have the same kind of effect. So, um, co-op, in, in my opinion, pretty much carries this entire game. Co-op alone is, is worth the purchase price. So, uh, on to multiplayer. I gotta say, I, w I was not looking... You know, I was looking forward to multiplayer, but at the same time, I was I was very hesitant about it. And you know, I've had quite a bit of time played. I played tons of beta action, and now I've played quite a bit of the uh, multiplayer in the actual game itself. And like I say the mechanics are very solid. There's a large amount of weapon configurations in the game. I think approximately around two million, and I think I'm going to detail that a little bit more when we get down to the gunsmith portion of the review. Um, they have a whole area dedicated to that in the game. Despite having a large array of weapons, they seem to be balanced very well. And um, 
and for a modern first person shooter balancing weapons well is a very important topic and they seem so far to have done that very well i don't think a lot of people have unlocked uh some of the higher end stuff which may throw the balance off a bit but at the time of this review it, it it's it's done well teamwork is absolutely focused now and that is super important i'm just really glad that that ubisoft took that direction and, and it increases the multiplayer overall value and the replayability in the future, in my opinion. I like team-based and objective-oriented games. I don't like games where you can run around as Lone Wolf. And uh, So, again, that's, that's my opinion. Uh, the Lone Wolves get less points, and I'll, I'll explain to you why. Functions like hacking an enemy or completing an objective far outweigh points for killing. This encourages people to play the objectives more. And uh, and I think that's great. I think that's awesome. The map design is is really open. It's kind of, you know, it's you know, it's not like Call of Duty where you're chucked down a tunnel and there's very defined paths. It, and, but it's not like Battlefield where it's completely open. It's kind of in between the two. Um, it's open and it does encourage you to take alternative paths. Unfortunately, the way that it's designed also <laughs> gives corner cap campers uh, plenty of places to set up camp and uh, snipers to perch and knock people out so you know as it's it's a double-edged sword I, I I think that they've struck a halfway decent balance though overall the multiplayer is really an enjoyable experience so now to the gunsmith the gunsmith uh, for those of you who don't know, the Gunsmith is a weapon building program. It allows you to completely customize your weapons, uh, all the way from like barrel to the stock. I mean, the whole gun. You can pretty much adjust anything on it. Optics, under barrel, attachments, all that stuff. And they all have pros and cons of that. And that's where the approximately two, different, two million different weapons comes in, because you have a whole set of these weapons that you can individually tweak to your personal likes. Um, I gotta say, I was I was thinking that it was really gimmicky at first, but it's it's a surprisingly addictive part of the game for me. I've probably spent more time playing with my guns than I have actually playing the game thus far. Um, it can be a bit time consuming too, because you're gonna sit in there, you're gonna make a tweak on a gun, and then you're gonna go to the firing range, which is built right into the gunsmith. You can just go shoot targets at random, and uh, and check out your changes on the gun and see if you like it. And uh, it, it can be it can be a big time sucker, but it's it's definitely a lot of fun. One thing that I did wish that they did was add a comparison tool for you and your friends, so you can compare what kind of setups they're running versus what kind of setups you're running. So that's pretty much how the gunsmith works. I think it's a great addition. And I think they did it very well. I did not get a chance to use it with Connect. Um, I I've heard that it is Connect enabled, um, but uh, you know. For those of you, if you're checking it out down in there, throw it, throw it down in the comments. Tell us what you think of, of that. I'd like to see it. So, Gorilla Mode. Gorilla Mode is... this. It's pretty much a standard survival or horde mode, right? Uh, another addition that seemed... It seems to come standard any modern shooter nowadays. Everybody's got this horde mode or, or survival mode or whatever. Ubisoft does a little bit of their own tweaking on it. They have some sneaky, stealthy type mission in between waves, and this gives it kind of a unique spin, but ultimately it's just a standard uh, Gears of War horde mode, in my opinion. So, uh, it is fun, and, and it, it's good. It's going to be a good time with friends, and, and it just adds something else that, that, that continues the replayability of this game, in my opinion. So, pretty much in uh, conclusion here, the story for the single player is rehashed and tired. Uh, Ubisoft made some major concessions to the franchise to appease the modern shooter fan base, and uh, I am sure this is going to piss off more than more than a few of the old fans of the old Ghost games because there's quite some stark differences. I mean, they still maintain that 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 familiar sense that you got from uh, the the previous Gras and Ghost games. But it's it's definitely been modernized quite a bit to the to to our new standard uh, in in shooters. Uh, multiplayer with the team focus atmosphere is an enjoyable experience and definitely a plus in my opinion. Co-op is deeply satisfying, it makes the game worth the money alone, and in my opinion, this game is a definite buy. So thanks for listening, guys, and don't forget to subscribe.